be to Job 19. Just, I want to begin with, with a verse. Job 19th chapter of Job. That's just before the book of Psalms for our new converts. And go to the 19th chapter of Job, if you will, please. And I want to read verses 25 and 27. Verse 25, Job 19. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Verse 27, whom I shall see for myself. Hallelujah. Say it. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Hallelujah. Whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold. He's going to come down to the earth and stand in the latter day. Hallelujah. Now, who is there among us who have not heard He's not heard of the second coming of Jesus. Those of us who believe his word expect him to come back to this earth just as he said he left. He's coming back in the clouds just as he left. The scripture makes that very clear. He's coming one last time. His second coming and last coming. He's coming to catch away his bride. Hallelujah. But few Christians understand the chain of events that are going to happen just prior, during, and after the coming of the Lord. In fact, most of my preaching is focused either on the signs of his coming or the event of his coming. I've preached very little. I called Brother Bob last night and I said, I'm in new territory. I don't think I've ever preached on some of these subjects. And we were commenting how many Bible teachers and prophecy teachers seem to have it all figured out. And they're trying to put everything in place. I'm not trying to figure it all out. I'm just going to uh, share with you some of the sequential events that I think that I believe from the uh, seeing in the scripture are going to happen. And what I'm sharing with you, the outline I share is really not original with me. It, I, I've, I've been looking for years for an outline of end time events. What's going to happen just prior to his coming, during his coming, and after his coming? What happens to the saint and the sinner? Uh, and I found it in an old book given to me by a great old prophet of God. It was written in 1855 by Isaac Ambrose, and it's called Looking Unto Jesus. And it was a simple outline, and I'm using his outline tonight. Let me take you right into these events, and I'm going to list about five or six of these end-time events. I don't know how far I'm going to get, uh, because it's just been blessing me just studying it. I feel uh, elevated in my spirit just studying it and thinking about it, and I hope you'll be elevated by the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm going to share with you this outline of what I believe is going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen, one of these days soon, our Lord is going to put a sudden end to time. Time shall be no more. You'll find it in Revelation. Don't turn it, but the 10th chapter in the first seven verses of Revelation. An angel is going to be sent from Christ, going to send to this earth. He's going to put his foot on the sea and in the land, and he's going to announce and proclaim that time is ending. Time shall be no more, that the mysterious plan of God is completed. The salvation of mankind is completed. The last prophecy has been given. The last church service has been held. The last soul has been saved that's going to be saved. And he's going to plant his foot on the sea and the earth and announce time shall be no more. And I saw another angel come down from heaven. And he set his right foot upon the sea, his left foot on the earth. And he cried with a loud voice. And he lifted up his hand to heaven. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever that there shall be time no longer. And the mystery or the secret plan of God is finished. And as he has declared to his servants the prophets. Now Jesus can say to his father, my days of priesthood are over. I'm going to put on my judgment robes. I'm going to gather the host of heaven and earth. And I'm going to the judgment. And folks, when the angels of the Lord hear the sound that he's going back to earth to redeem mankind, when it suddenly dawns on angelic host, that man, this great creation of God, who is so loved, this, this, adder, this Christ who has given his very life for mankind, are coming home. And they're going to be one with us. What a shout there's going to be in glory. What a shout there's going to be. The seventh angel... 
is going to make a mighty shout. And he's going to cry, the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. Now imagine the shouting in heaven. In fact, the scripture says, when the seventh angel sounded, and what he's saying, time shall be no more. Salvation is finished. The work of God is done. And now Jesus is beginning to leave the portals of glory. And he's coming down to the earth. And when this movement is made and the Father said it's time to go. There's going to be a great shout in heaven. The scripture says in the seventh angel shout, sounded. And there was a great and there were great voices in heaven. Great voices in heaven. This is the day that they've longed for, the day that they've imagined, the day the martyrs will be vindicated, when the saints are going to get new bodies, and the bride is going to meet the Lamb of God, and the angels and the redeemed of all ages are going to meet together around the throne of God. No wonder there's a shout in glory. This is the day. This is the day. We sing it. This is the day the Lord has made. One day soon, it's going to ring all through heaven. This is the day. What a host is coming. Now, not only is it going to be the end of time, it's going to be the end of all power and authority of the enemies of Jesus Christ. Now, beloved, God's been warning me not to get riled up anymore. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to bite the bullet on this, but the Lord's been telling me not to get riled up anymore about the powers and the authority of the devil of uh, atheistic forces, of the media that's taking power, of homosexual power that's gaining authority here in America. And the Lord says, don't get riled up because it's not going to last much longer. It's all destined for the fires. It's not going to be forever. Let them have their day. Don't get worked up about it because you know how the story ends. All things are going to be put under the rule of Jesus Christ. Those that have this growing power are not going to prevail. It's all suddenly going to end in a moment of time. The Father will say to His Son, Jesus, Go now, put on your robes and appear in glory. Empty the heavens of all the angels and the glorious spirits. Set on your judgment seat. Call the world to judgment. Judge and seal the reprobates to hell and bring your bride and the redeemed of the earth into glory. Hallelujah. So the first thing on the agenda is the announcement that it's all over. Time shall be no more. Now, that doesn't mean that that moment time will end, but it means that the announcement has been made and it sets in motion a series of events that will not take long. This could be hours. I don't know, but it's going to be swift moving events. Jesus is going to come in, a, in uh, with his great host. He's going to come, descend out of the heavenly uh, heaven of heavens. He's going to descend toward the earth. And he's going to take his imperial throne. And when the world first sees him, they're going to see him on his judgment throne. That's why they're going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall and uh, hide them from his very face. He's going to come in judgment. He's not coming as the lamb now. He's coming clothed in fire, the scripture says. It's amazing when you get into it. A mighty heavenly host is going to descend with him. All the royal attendants of glory. Heaven is going to be emptied of every angel. Every cherubim, every seraphim, all the four and twenty elders, uh, all of the host of heaven are going to come with him. A great retinue. Behold, the Lord comes with his mighty angels. Second Thessalonians 1 7. Behold, the Lord will come with thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. A thousand thousands will minister unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 shall stand before him. Daniel 7.10 Then the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him. He's not coming alone. He's coming with all the host of heaven. And they're going to appear in the heavens. And he's going to sit on his throne in a cloud of glory and fire. 
And the Bible said the sun and the moon will refuse to shine. And what that means is that the brightness of his coming is so bright that the sun will seem darkness in comparison. It will be darkness in comparison. Folks, one of these days there's going to be a bright light. You'll be in a building like this. You could be in a building with no lights and it will light up inside. A transparent light. I've heard people say, well, when Jesus comes, how is the whole world going to see him? Because there's 24 hours on the other side where it's night here, it's day there. And how does everybody, you'd have to see through the earth on the, uh, on the night side. If he's coming in the day, if he's coming in the night, you have this great time difference, all these time zones. Well, listen, Jesus and his glorified body walk right through walls. Do you think the earth is going to not be penetrated? It's going to be transparent when he comes. Every man on the face of the earth, every child, the islands of the sea are going to see him. The Bible said he's going to come clothed with fire. A fire shall devour before him when he comes, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. Behold, the Lord will come with fire in his chariots like a whirlwind. And the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Oh, hallelujah. He's coming in flaming fire. That's the very fire that's going to consume the heavens and the earth. He's going to come in a brightness, in a cloud of fire. Man's kind, mankind's first view of him will be this cloud of fire, a glory cloud ablaze with fire. Then shall appear the sight of the Son of Man in heaven. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, with great glory, all the glory of his created beings in heaven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and all they also which pierced him. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The homosexual tribe will mourn. The atheistic tribe will mourn. The communistic tribe will mourn. All the tribes, the sinful tribe, because sin always gathers together tribes, and all these tribes are going to mourn. The Broadway tribe will mourn. Folks, we're not here to integrate with Broadway. We're here to proclaim this gospel that it's all going to end. Right across the street, listen to me, right across the street tonight at 9 o'clock at the Tony Awards. They have been living for the day. They can carry this little Tony and put him on the mantle. One of these days, it melts like butter. In the fiery presence of God. What a emptiness. We're here to combat that. We're not here as enemies. We're here as friends of Jesus Christ. To proclaim that that world is dying and decaying. It's all over. And there's only one thing that counts now. Is where you are with the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. The sun and the moon will refuse to shine. The scripture says. Christ, you know, when he appears, every time he's appeared, it's been in brightness. You remember he appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration, and the brightness was so bright, the disciples fell on their face. Do you remember when Jesus appeared to Saul? It was so bright, he fell on his face, and he was blinded. In fact, he had to have hands laid on, he had to be healed, and scales fell off his eyes just at the sight of the brightness of Jesus Christ. He's going to have to give us special eyes to see. We'll not be able to even gaze at that with, with, with our human bodies. He's going to have the angel that's going to come and collect us. Now talk about the minute. He's going to have to shield our eyes until we get our new bodies. Hallelujah. The sinners are going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them, to hide them. Demons are going to flee in terror. The mockers and scoffers are going to fall as dead men before his vision. Those who forsook him and turned their back and rejected his mercy. There are no words to describe the terror of those who knew and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, the third event. First of all, he's going to send an angel. The seventh angel is going to announce the end of time. And he's going to come and appear in his great retinue and glory. He's going to appear in the heavens and every eye, everyone is going to see 
They're going to hide themselves. They're going to mourn. They're going to, to, the Bible said they're going to try to kill themselves and will not be able to. Just at the awesome terror of his appearing. And then, as he appears, he's going to send his angels. First, he's going to roar. He's going to thunder. Remember, at the tomb of Lazarus, the scripture said he cried with a what? Loud voice. Lazarus! It wasn't a mousy voice. He cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Can you imagine when he stands in the heavens above this earth? He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. And all he's going to say, Saints, arise! What a thundering in every grave in the history of this earth. Going to thunder all over the world from Moscow to London, all through America, all the graves of all of our great servants of God in New England. They're going to rise, going to shake the graves. And the Lord is going to say to the angels, go now and gather my elect. Go to the bottom of the sea where every man has ever drowned who loved me. Go down to the depths of the pits of the earth and I won't lose one atom. I want every atom brought to me of every one of my children. Not one grain of dust will be lost. the Bible said those of us who are alive and remain the dead are raised first then we alive and remain are going to be caught up to meet him in the air folks can you get that picture the angels are awaiting that scene if you could call them breathless they would be breathless anticipating this resurrection what a resurrection day when every dead saint of all time is called home a host of angels are gathering from the four winds and they're gathering them home. We are going first. Hallelujah. The saints go first because we're going to be there to judge the world with him. I'm going to show it to you very clearly. We're going to judge the world. We're going to judge fallen angels. We're going to judge the devil. I'm going to show you something just a little bit. Go make you shout. Brother Bob gave me a hit on it and I looked into it. It's just powerful how we're going to sit there and judge the devil. He's going to gather the, the elect. Can you imagine what it's like when suddenly there is Abraham, there's Isaac, there is Jacob, there's Peter, there's Paul, they're all the saints of all times, and we're there and we're all discovering our new bodies. We're looking at these new bodies because they're in the image of the Son of God. And I think the first thing is going to be this sudden realization, this is a new body. Something's happening in a moment of time. The Bible said in the twinkling of an eye, bat your eye. That's how quick it's going to happen. In the twinkling of an eye, we are going to be transported into new bodies in his own images. In his own image. Hallelujah. We'll recognize one another because the Bible said we're going to remember one another. How can we give an account if we don't remember? You know, we're going to remember. We're going to see. We're going to know one another. We're going to know as we are known, the scripture says. Somehow we're going to know Abraham. Somehow we're going to know everybody. Even though there's a name they have that only the Lord knows. We're going to know. He's going to have that wonderful fellowship of the saints. We're going to know. If we're going to know him, we're going to know his saints. Hallelujah. Some of you, I don't know by name. The pastor don't know it. We know you by your face. And we love you by your face and by your spirit. Then we're going to know your name. And your spirit. Hallelujah. What a resurrection that is going to be. Christ has made a shout. He's awakened his saints. The dead for the hour is coming. In which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And they shall come forth. Then we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them to meet in the clouds. Hallelujah. Folks. First we get acquainted with this new body. And then suddenly. Suddenly, there he is, the one we have sung about, and he's sitting on his throne of judgment. To us, it's a throne of glory. 
But to the world, to the ungodly, it's the judgment. It's the throne of judgment. And folks, we're going to stand before his brilliance, but we're going to reflect that glory because my Bible said he shall be glorified in his saints. He's going to be glorified in his saints. You and I are going to reflect the very glory and the brilliance of the Lord Jesus Christ. You talk about a praise meeting. What's it going to be like when we all get your first glimpse of Jesus? Have you ever thought about that? Your first glimpse. This is not, it's not, it's not now worshiping him whom we've not seen. Now, all the years that we've anticipated, all the praises that have gone up from, from our very first time we learned to love him, it's all pointing to this one moment of discovery. When we see him, and when we see him, he's going to be a man. He's going to be a man. He's God and he's man. He's going to have hands and feet. You're going to have the same body, the same kind of body as he does, made in his own image. But there he is. Folks, can you imagine? Well, John tried to describe what it's going to be like. As we, the scripture said, we're going to all fall down. Before his throne, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues. No man could number this host. And folks, we're standing on nothing. We're supported by his glory. Nothing else. We're in the heavens. You talk about walking on water, we're going to walk on air. We're, we're going to walk on nothing. He's going to... Suspend us in his glory. Amazing. And people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb and cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne and about the elders and the four beasts. And they all fell before the throne on their faces and worship God saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving honor might be to our God forever and ever all he has to do is stand or stretch out his arms and say welcome welcome <laughs> Some of you don't believe it's going to happen just like that. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. Listen, if the prodigal son was welcomed home in all of his filth and all of his squalor, if he's welcomed home with hugs and kisses, what will it be like when Jesus welcomes the redeemed? If he hugs and kisses a reprobate coming home, what is he going to do to his children who love him? Oh, glory be to God. What a day. Yes, the Bible said we're all going to stand before him and give an account. But I want to tell you something. When you and I as Christians and believers stand before his throne, it's not going to be a day of terror for you and I. Because the Bible said in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand, that's where we're going to be seated at his right hand, our pleasures forevermore. The scriptures are, he that cometh, he that heareth my word and believeth on him has everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation. In fact, the, the apostle said we're going to pre, be presented before his throne, spotless, faultless, with exceeding great joy. Now, folks, I don't know how our works are going to burn. But I know that whatever happens, we're going to be there with exceeding great joy. Glad to see them burn. And all of those things that were unlike Christ, all those things that hay wouldn't stumble, whatever it may be, somehow God miraculously dissolved this. And we're glad to see it consumed because, folks, we learned long ago not to depend on works, but by faith alone in Jesus Christ. And what a glorious bonfire. In other words, to get rid of even the memory of it, so that in eternity we'll not even think of it. It's all burned and gone by the fire of his presence. Hallelujah. I don't, I can't put this in sequence. But I do know that when you and I as blood-washed believers stand before the throne of God to give an account, 
It's going to be a glorious experience because he who sits on the bench, he who sits on the throne is our redeemer, kinsman, brother, friend, lover. He's all in all to us. He's going to embrace us. And then, folks, we are going to be seated at his right hand on thrones. Now, thrones, don't, don't picture some big uh, golden ivory throne. A throne there means a seat of power and authority, a seat of judgment. Wherever we're seated, we're seated there as, as judges, so to speak. We're, we're the jury of this great judge. And I'll, I'll show you that very, very clearly in the scripture here. He's going to call us to assist him in the judgment. Now that we have been introduced to the Lamb, now we've met him and we've praised him and we've fallen to his feet and we've worshipped him and we've had a great time of praise. Now we're seated at the right hand of the judge. And the judgments begin of the great white throne judgment. And we are there as participants in this great hour of judgment. And the Lord will say, all of those who said this man shall not rule over us, call them. Every man, every woman, in all time who said this man shall not rule over us, I am that man, call them. And all the wicked of all time, man first, I believe, mankind, stand before him. The scripture says, I will confess uh, his name before my father knows holy angel. In fact, I really believe that before we're seated, our name is called out of the book of life. And Jesus is going to call every name himself. And he's going to confess our name before the Father. That's what he says. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. I'm going to introduce you one by one to all my angels. Bob Phillips. Don Wilkerson. David Wilkerson. Jimmy. Billy. I better put a few women in here, sister... When every name, I'm going to call every name out of the Lamb's book of life. I'll confess you before the Father. David Wilkerson, you are mine. I don't know what the angels are going to do. I don't know whether they nod. I don't think they'll applaud. But there's going to be an acknowledgement. Very clearly, there's going to be acknowledgement before the Father and all the angels. And to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Jesus told his apostles, you shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We're going to judge. We're going to be there as part of this great judgment scene. It appears that the entire church of Jesus Christ will be seated at his right hand. I don't know. That scene is so massive. That scene is so beyond human comprehension. We can't even imagine it. It's beyond our comprehension. Then the goats, the sinner, is going to be brought before the throne. And Christ is going to say to those who mocked and ridiculed and persecuted and jailed and cut asunder the saints of God, martyred the millions, Reproach the name of Jesus Christ. And he's going to say, you joint heirs of hell. There was a time when you hated me and all my children. You trod down, you trod on my word. You trod underfoot the gospel. You crucified me afresh daily. You abused and mocked my ministers and my prophets. You had no time for those who loved me. You cursed all that was good and holy. Now look to my right hand. Look at the faces of all those that you ridicule. They're my witnesses against you. We are going to be witnesses against all those who persecuted all time. Every sinner who's mocked you, every enemy of Jesus Christ is going to be there. And you are going to be a witness. The Bible says even uh, the men of Nineveh are going to rise up. Queen of Sheba is going to rise up at the judgment. Now, they're going to, many of these are going to be damned, the men of Nineveh. But we're going to rise up at the judgment and be witnesses. Christ 
and his saints are going to pronounce sentence upon the wicked, depart ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The scriptures make it clear. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? 1 Corinthians 6, 2. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Daniel 7, 22. Jude 14, 15. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints who will execute judgment upon all. Know you not that we shall judge the angels? 1 Corinthians 6, 5. You're not going to tremble. Do you think the, <laughs> you, you go, you and I are going to be so surprised at that moment. Isaiah 14. Let's begin with verse, uh, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut, cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Thou said in thine heart, I'll ascend into heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee. Now this is at the judgment. They that see thee. That's all the angels. This is all the redeemed. There he is standing before the throne on his knees, on his face. And they that see shall narrowly, they're going to study it, they're, they're going to be amazed, they'll look upon thee and consider thee and say, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness? Is this the man? There he is, trembling. Oh, you talk about the Lord being glorified. You talk about the saints being glorified. And what a moment. He says, never again. All the kingdoms of the world are mine. Be gone. In everlasting darkness. Be gone out of my sight. And what a day we will stand and praise him. Who finally, the heel has been crushed. Uh, or, or rather the serpent's head has been crossed and he who presses his heel finally on him ends forever. Any thought of Satan taking authority and power, he'll be cast forever into eternal damnation and then we will know never again will be harassed, never again a demon power, never again a lying spirit, never again, never. Free. What a praise will glow up to Jesus Christ we're going to fall before him and praise him. You talk about a praise meeting. We don't even know what it's like yet. When the angels and the saints gather to praise his holy name. Now, the sinners, fallen angels, the devil cast into outer darkness. The judgments are finished. We've met him. Now what does he do? Of course, he's going to lead us home. We're going to his father's house. Because the Bible said he's going to present us to his father and he's going to submit himself and all the kings, everything to the father. We're going to be, we're going to be introduced as a terrible army with banners. We're going to enter the gates of his celestial city. And the scripture says that he might present us without spot unto his father. Then shall he deliver up the kingdom to God, even to his Father. Then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Folks, get this picture. It says, come, follow me. We are going to ascend through the celestial heavens, through the cosmos, into a city he's been preparing. A city, I said that we can't even begin to comprehend. There's no human language can describe that brilliant city that we're going to. And behind him are all the angels. Behind him are the seraphim, the cherubim. And this is a, a battle. This is an army uh, awesome with banners. And we are following him home. We're going to heaven. We're going to glory. Praise his wonderful name. Folks, 
We're not going to be spirits. We're going to be bodies. We're going to be bodies. We're going to, I feel this right now. We're going to feel it. We're going to have ecstasy. We're going to be speaking with voices like I'm speaking to you now. We're going to sing the same songs, maybe, that we're singing now. And I have a hit what we're going to sing. Come and go with me to my father's house. Wicked in hell. There, that's in outer darkness beyond the universe. Christians are beyond the universe in glory with Jesus. What about the earth and the sun, the moon, the stars of this cosmos and universe? Well, folks, there's no need for it anymore. It's going to be depopulated. There'll be no sinners, be no saints. The sun and the moon, the stars were made for the glory of Jesus or the use of mankind. There's no need for it anymore. Now, I know a lot of people talk about uh, th that uh, the earth is just going to be renovated by fire. But that's not what the scripture says at all. In fact, some of the early church fathers believed that the fire was just going to renovate it. Polanus wrote, for example, these heavens and this earth, when purified with those fires, will be superinvested with new endowments they shall be the everlasting habitation of the blessed saints. In other words, God's just going to kind of clean up things and then bring us back to a cleaned up universe. That's not what the Bible said at all. My Bible said that heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Now, folks, scientists are talking about the Big Bang, that the earth was came to life with a Big Bang, that... Life started with a big bang. It's going to end, folks, with a big bang. It's going to end with a big bang. My Bible said the earth and the heavens are reserved under fire to the day of judgment. They're reserved. Now that we're gone, there's no need for, the, for, for this anymore. The scripture is very, very clear. And most church fathers uh, believe just exactly what I'm preaching to you now. Of old... Hast thou laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens of thy hands, but they shall perish, but you shall endure. This is Isaiah 34, 4. All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together like a scroll, and all the hosts shall fall down as a leaf that falleth from the vine. Heaven and earth shall pass away, Jesus said, but my word shall not pass away. The scripture here is very clear in 2 Peter 3, 12 and 13, where in the heavens... Being on fire, they shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hallelujah. John said, and I saw a new heaven, and I saw a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And folks, in the Greek, and it says with no more sea, in the Greek, that means it annihilated. The word is annihilated. It was gone. It's passed away. Not one atom left. The sun is going to explode into little atoms. The moon and the stars are going to pass away. God is going to remove it all and start all over. And he's going to speak into being a new earth and a new heavens. Going to speak it into being. It's not going to be renovated. It's going to be all new. He said, behold, I make all things new. Glory be to God. A new heaven and a new earth. Folks, if, if this earth, you go to some of the beauty spots on this earth, you go to uh, Sequoia National Forest, you go up into Alaska and look at some of those huge trees and beauties of uh, the mountains, you go to some of those gorgeous places. If God can do that in 6,000 years. Can you imagine what he can do in eternity? He's going to keep creating beauty. It's going to be not a study creation. It's going to be life that flows, new discovery. You're not going to sit around floating on a cloud playing a harp. You're going to be busy, 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 ruling and reigning over his righteous works. All will be righteousness and peace and glory. Hallelujah. There'll be a whole new world where there is no waste. There is no decay. It talks about a sea that is so quiet it looks like glass. It talks about mansions. It talks about trees that uh, there's no waste. They're, they're, they, the, the leaves don't fade. They never fall. And 12 kinds of fruit all the time. 12 different kinds of fruit coming at different times. 
are, are, uh, uh, there are no seasons in heaven, but there will be constant birthing of new life at all times. Oh, we are going to be so occupied. He said, occupied till I come. We're going to be occupied all through eternity. My wife loves flowers. I've been praying, oh, Jesus, give her one of the biggest gardens you ever had in glory. Hallelujah. She won't have to pluck flowers. All she has to do is admire them. All she has to do is walk among them and praise God for his beauty. Hallelujah. What a, what a wonder it will be. Our minds, if, if, if the Lord would suddenly turn on the lights and just let us, maybe that's why Paul said he saw things he couldn't utter. I'm afraid that uh, Paul just couldn't even utter them because they were unspeakable, he said. If God opened up our eyes and we just had three minutes into eternity, he, we could just walk a few moments in glory with Jesus. First place, we never want to come home. We never want to come back to life. But folks, you would see, hear things, and recognize, you, you, you would be in a world that you could not conceive. Humanly, our finite minds cannot grasp it. Cannot grasp I've had just a little taste of it. See, just a little bit of it that my mind, it was so beyond my mind. Uh, there may be, I don't know, it's speculation. There may be planets that he, uh, inter, uh, that we can just travel through the whole universe because there will not have to be gravity holding us. He can create a whole new way of moving about his glorious new universe. But most of all, King Jesus will be there. You say, well, if, if he submits to the Father and God is all in all, where does the Lamb fit in? Well, he, we're, he's going to reveal himself as God. We're going to see him not only as humanity but as divinity. We're going to see the glory of Christ that God has placed upon him. And we are going to be one as he is with the Father. We're all going to, it's going to be one glorious unit. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. But the heavens and the earth are kept in store, reserved for fire against the day of judgment. And folks, we're going to, we're going to watch this. I really believe we're going to see this Holocaust when he speaks one word, one commandment. Because it's all been reserved. It's there already. That fire is reserved. The Bible said it's already reserved. And all he has to speak the word and he just says the word. Burn! Suddenly, a holocaust. Sun, moon, stars, earth. Exploding into nothing. Until there's not an atom left. Not an atom left. <laughs> but then suddenly, in his brightness and his glory, he spoke the word and created the heavens and the earth in the first place. He took dust and made man. Now he gives us a new body and a new world, and a new world with a precious Savior forever and ever. Now you say, you know, there was a time I, I never wanted to preach about these things because I thought, well, let's just serve the Lord with all of our hearts and whatever he has for us, it'll all be blessing. Don't worry about it. Let's just, and they're preachers even today, so I don't want to know anything about that. But I'm finding the older I get, the more I see that's unscriptural. It's scriptural to, to, to think on these things. In fact, Jesus warned us to carefully consider these end time signs. He said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And Peter preached the very things I'm preaching about the earth dissolving and the new heavens and the new earth. He said, I give this to you to stir up your mind. Stir up your mind. And he said, wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, a new heaven, a new earth, be diligent that you may be found in peace without spot and blameless. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy living and godliness? He said, I'm telling you these things so you can be disentangled from the things of this world so that you can think on eternity so your problems, your conversation will be heavenly, not earthly. You can be elevated out of the things of this world and get your mind on eternity. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something before I close. It's hard for people under 30 to think about eternity unless you really love Jesus. Because you're just coming into the exuberance of life and everything else. And your whole life is ahead of you. And it's hard. Be careful. Be careful. I tell you every day now. I meditate 
on what it's going to be like to be taken into glory and see my Jesus. I've been meditating on eternity and living eternally with Christ. Folks, if he gives me, you know, I'm blank years old. And if, if he gives me another 15, 20 years, what is that? It's just uh, grass that burns. It's just vapor that vanishes. Your whole life, he said, is a vapor. It's all passing away. Imagine your whole lifetime, the Bible says, is a vapor that appears and is suddenly gone. Well, folks, the vapor is going to vanish, and we're going to be eternally secure with him. And I don't know about you, but for me, that puts joy in my soul, and I rejoice. And if you can't rejoice about that tonight, it means that you're tied to this world. It means that sin has your heart, and Jesus is not all in all to you. And that needs to be settled tonight. Will you stand, please? Will you stand? You say, Brother Dave, that's anticlimactic. You should have closed when you were singing high. <laughs> no, folks, this is not just emotion. You don't wake up and the truth is gone. It's still there. Hallelujah. I'm going home tonight, lay down on my bed and think all these things. It's going to be just as real then as I preached it tonight. It's going to be real. Folks, this is not a mirage. This is not fantasy. Jesus is coming. This world is passing away and all the things that are in it are going to burn. That's what Jesus said. All passing away. Only what's done for Christ in him and through him is going to last. Now, Jesus, there are people standing in this church tonight that can't think of eternity. They can't rejoice in thinking about standing before your judgment seat. There's fear and anxiety in their heart because the enemy has made inroads into their heart. There's been compromise. There's been a coldness that slipped in. Oh, Jesus, heal that tonight. Remove the coldness, the emptiness, and the worldliness. And Jesus, come in tonight with hope, true hope that we can rejoice in our redemption. Up in the balcony, here in the main floor, I'm not going to whip you up into some kind of emotional uh, Anxiety to try to get you to walk down this aisle. Why should anybody be begged to come to Jesus when you know all this lies ahead of you? Just a simple step to give everything to him and walk with him. He promises you eternal life. Everything I've talked about is your... Folks, if you're going to turn that down, if you're just going to let sin rule and reign, and if you think that you'll trade all that for a few years of pleasure, as for me, I'll say with Moses, I would rather suffer with God's people than enjoy the pleasure of this earth just for a season. It's all passing away. It's all going to burn. All the golden Fort Knox is going to melt like butter. Tokyo is going to be gone. London's going to be gone. New York's going to be gone. Suddenly it's all going to be gone. Everything that man has traced, it's gone. There'd be absolutely nothing left. Why hold on to it? Let it go, folks. Have it, but enjoy it, but don't abuse it. And just thank God for your blessings, but keep your eye on the new Jerusalem. We're going home, folks. How many can say you're ready to go? I'm ready to go. Well, there are a number of you. The number of you here tonight. And I say it in this I'm closing. You're not ready. You're not ready. I said one more time. You are not ready to meet him face to face and look him in the eye. Because something else has your heart from this world, either sin or this world, or bitterness or confusion. While they're singing, I want you to get right out of your seat. I want you to come up here and let me pray for you right now. And believe the Lord to deliver you, set you free, and set you on the road to Father's house. Father, finish the work right now. Holy Spirit, go throughout this whole congregation right now. And call us home. Call every stray home. Every lost sheep home. Holy Spirit convict. Grab each heart and say tonight. Tonight is your night. Come on. Get out of your seat right now. And come and meet us right here. Move up close. Stand right here in the front. I'm going to pray for you. Ask God for a miracle in your life. Don't stand there. Get out. You know. The Holy Spirit's talking to you right now. You know whether or not you're walking where you should walk. You know how close or how far you strayed from Jesus. If you've been straying. If you've been cold, if you've been indifferent, come. If you don't know him, come.
You've never known him come. If you've known him and walked away,